Let's play this one in full, of course. There's sound. And as you can tell, it loops. Ends here, starts there. It's really great. I'm going to turn off the sound. As always, disclaimer, I'm not a stop motion animator, so I can't evaluate the uh, the technique behind it, if it's good or bad or everything. To me, this looks great. But again, you know, you got to imagine where this comes from. But I'm always a big fan when you have uh, actual human elements, not just objects, but it still looks stop motion-y. But from an animation point of view, I like that. The contrast of this, right? We're here, but it goes up and this tip is dragging. This goes up, then goes up, but then angles in a different area with a little bit of a drag with the tip there to push this down to cut this. It's cool, two over one frame. Of course, nicely uh, over one frame, you see all the other cuts in there for this, but it's nice. I like the that the timing of this I really like because you got that roll and then up, slight hold, and then drop. So watch that in real time. And swing, doom, just that. Nice rhythm. Then you got that little slide off this section here. What is that, a fork? Can't tell. I wonder what this is here. It must be that light to illuminate the scene. And it's moving the set, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. And it's cute, especially how then... It moves into a creature that looks like a swan, although a swan would have a longer neck, but whatever. I don't know, swan, duck, apple duck, apple swan. <laughs> but it's great. But also, again, the rhythm of this with a little bit of a stop, but also comes towards us. I was a big fan of using depth in a scene and not just being kind of stuck and put. So you use left and right, but also out into the scene and coming back. I think that's cool there. And then as it goes back, oh, this is frame by frame here. Goes up, it was a fork. Nicely rounded, so you can get up there. And then, bloop, over one frame. Back into the apple. Roll. Let me see the roll in real time. I see even that. It rolls and then overshoots a bit. And then comes back into the same position. Because now I'm looping boop, into this. Boop. And then you can play this again. It's really cool. Again, I'm not a specialist in terms of what the technique was used and what you could do better in terms of, you know, all that good stuff, but that's really neat. If I look at the background and the folds, it seems to be all the same. And given that the light, whatever it is, it stays put, I would assume that these are the objects that are also moving to imply a camera move. That is my guess, my very uneducated <laughs> guess. But that's that. So these are short and sweet. Critiques are short and sweet. Again, not. This is actually, in terms of animation and anything that I would do differently, let's pretend this was in CG. I, I can't really say anything. The only thing, maybe, if we are saying these are wings of a duck or a swan to me, then I would say maybe at this part it would be interesting. They do trail, but then there could have been something where maybe they go up, which would be a pain to do because these are just placed. So there would have been something where maybe you have to stick them or something for a little flap or something where you have, let me see, because you go forward, shroom, trail, shroom, trail, shroom, trail. So it's good that it's on threes, but it has an ever so slight and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's not a waltz. <laughs> where that is maybe even, so that could have been maybe the third one, a change of timing and maybe even with a little flare with the wings to go up for some extra time and contrast and animation body pose contrast, Apple contrast. Uh, and that is that. Again, that's a super picky and I always feel bad for critiquing something I'm not doing that I would never be able to do that well. So I believe it at that. Uh, again, it's a really, really cool example and a great submission.